Bradley, you require 40. Um, I have a question for you, Matt. Did your life shot on a first leg. flash Bradley before Roos. your eyes last night on our way home when we nearly got killed? <laughs> oh, Bradley, you require 86. If you can tell me where you can get a bit of world-class entertainment for 12 quid, I'll join you. Shot Beautiful there flag. from Bradley, Bradley Rose. Savaging around the 95 mark where he's been throughout this entire fixture. Now I suppose it's sort of gone full circle. No score. Bradley requires 62. Oh, this one for the first win of the group for Bradley Rose. And maybe his day could go full circle in regards to what he did Great yesterday. A the perfect performance there on the finishing for Bradley Roos. Four from four, and he is a happy guy. He would have walked off the stage yesterday very disappointed, not picking up a win, but it's a perfect start. A 4-1 victory there over Kieran Tian, and he keeps his hopes alive of somehow making one of the greatest turnarounds we have ever seen in a Group C campaign. He's in there fighting, but coming up next, Reese Robinson takes on Neil Duff. All he needs now is just tops, just one of them. Game shot on he a third it, leg. And that puts him just Robinson. a leg away from the perfect start of the day because this could be a big leg difference. And at the moment, going into today, it was leg difference first. that separated Game five on. players in the field. That was very special, and this has been special from Reese Robinson. Shot. He puts himself up Reece towards Robinson. the top of the table. He is the top of the table. A good, solid win there over one of his rivals. How important could that be come the end of the day? That 1-3-6 from Neil Duff could also play its part because leg difference is the only thing that separated the field at the start of the day. But right now, there's some points and a tiny little bit of daylight there for Reese Robinson, who continues where he played off yesterday. And, well... Andreas Harrison's going to want to do that, but he's got his hands full. He's taking on Andy Davidson. Andy requiring 91. This one, a combination shot. And so often Game you see that when you're struggling leg, to get a Andy double with Davidson. three darts, the combination shots seem to be more likely. And one hundred and five. Andy, you require 123. Oh, it's on. Gonna go to the 16 to leave him on the bullseye. 85. The last dart he Andreas gets to throw, Andreas 40. Harrison. Doesn't pass these opportunities too often when he's got three darts in hand. Game shot. And, and he doesn't. Match. Last Andreas start in Harrison. hand, just as Andy Davidson would have been hoping for an opportunity to come back to the board and extend the game another leg. Andreas Harrison, last start in hand, hurts Andy Davidson and strengthens his opportunity of getting through to Saturday night. He joins Reese Robinson at the top of the table on eight, and we now have a two-point gap between the qualifying places and the rest of the pack. Two players that will be hoping to close that, Neil Duff and Bradley Rose, go head-to-head -head coming up next. Only the top two from six go through, remember it, in Group C. Game oh, what a finish that is from Bradley, Bradley Rose. He's a dart away from the match. Double five. He's just having a look to see if he needs to go Game for it. Shot. Well, and he did match. go for it. Bradley he found Rose. it. Bradley Rose. Two from two after going down in all five matches yesterday. And the numbers 81 67 for Duff, 85 58, and it's back to back defeats for Neil Duff, who was joint top of the table, remember, at the start of play this afternoon. Both players finding just the one 180 apiece. When we come back, Kieran Tehan takes on the exciting Andy Davidson. Nine, Andy where you think, oh, I'm, I'm going to get one of these. Well, that is a way off, though, that first one. But shot on a sick rectifies leg. the situation in the end. And we go to a one-leg shootout. Provided Tian can't pull something off of the top shelf. That's not going to happen. So, Davidson 58. back for 76. Just needs 76. to stray straight on dart one, but finds the trouble 20. Game Pins the match. double eight. And Andy what a Davidson. turnaround that was. Yeah, holds his hands up to say what... Quite sure what happened early on. More importantly for Davidson, irrelevant of how you've got there. 
you got there, young man. You've got to eight points joining Robinson, Harrison, and a two-point lead over the the rest of the field. 80.57 for T and 83.10 for Davidson. Biggest game of the day so far coming up next as Reese Robinson takes on Andreas Harrison. It's big, big separation on the scoreboard. Reese Robinson's just got to cross his fingers and hope. But he's going for the wrong double. He's busted, no isn't he? Yeah. Lionel. Double two. A fourth visit to the board from 61 points here for Andreas Harrison. And he finally and gets over the line. Andreas Harrison. Something that Reese Robinson expected to hear a long time ago was game shot in the match, Andreas Harrison. But he ended up having a couple of chances himself. The 158 and then the 100. But he blown the chance with the first start. And Andreas Harrison looks a very, very relieved man right now. He dodged a bit of a bullet there that he kind of put on for himself. And that does complete our seventh cycle of fixtures with Andreas Harrison now top of the table on 10 points. And we'll start our eighth lap of fixtures with Andy Davidson taking on Neil Duff. Neil, you require 135. We'll start on the ball. That could be awkward if he gets the treble 20. We'll see what he does. He has to move to the right-hand side. 110. Wasn't able and to require 58. get the required dip to get around the dart. And just like earlier, that dart just Neil blocks him out of the tops if he just hits that top wire. And Neil Duff, this would be the opportunity he'd have been expecting to have when he kick-started this leg with a max. Game shot and on the fifth it. leg. Neil Pretty Duff. clean. That's the break of throw. He'll now walk straight down the hockey to get Neil a reprieve. 48. Tops to get the job done. Double ten. Game shot. Wow, and gets it done. Neil In Duff. the end, finds the target. Gets that all-important win. Remember, he'd lost his opening two matches. That was a huge game for Neil Duff to win, and he keeps himself well in the mix. 88 the average in the end. Below par performance for Andy Davison, 79.61. 180 apiece when we come back. <clears throat> Excuse me, Bradley Roos against Reese Robinson. Reese, you require 93. Reese Robinson, 93 points away from provisionally going top of the table. Shot and the Bradley match. was nodding Reece along Robinson. and he was right to do so. He expected it to go and we got the roar there from Reese Robinson. He knows what he's just achieved there. Great bounce back after losing with what had been the worst performance so far of the week. He then bounces back with an average of 98.56. A 4-0 victory over Bradley Rose, ending Bradley Rose's chances of qualifying here this week. And Reese Robinson temporarily goes top of the table at the expense of Andreas Harrison, who will be looking to get that straight back when he takes on Kieran Tian. Van Velsen. Double 18. On the first Absolutely leg. nails Harrison. it. 15 darter. Hold of throw 1 0. From Harrison. And this could be a fatal blow if Kieran Tian cannot take out the 56. Game shot on the Beautiful. sixth leg. Kieran Tian. The result. That will have Harrison on the top of the table. 140. Andreas, you require 20. Game shot and the match. And Andreas, Andreas Harrison. Harrison gets it done. And he does move to the top of the table. And the first player to breach the 12 points. Played 8 1 6. Lost just the two matches now. Legs 127. Plus 8 in the leg difference. Very Tidy performance, 97.95. Couple of 1.8 is in there. Very clean finishing. Four from seven and a high out of 106. When we come back, Bradley Roos takes on Andy Davidson. Andy, you require 109. Game shot on the first Beautiful. leg, Andy Davidson. Nice finish there for Andy Davidson, who... 
probably is what let him down at the Second start of the day. That Andy sort of put him in this must-win-now position. Those visits, though, from Bradley Roos might have just given the reprieve that Andy needed. Game shot on a sixth leg. Andy Davidson. Oh, some clutch finishing. <laughs> Andy require 145. Six starts at 145. To pull one out of the hat. 125. Oh, well, he started the leg with a 41. He's then found 180, 135, 125 to leave 59. Double 10 and he required after 20. 12. Game shot. Double 10. Match. He Andy finds Davidson. what a superb final leg for Andy Davidson. And he keeps his hopes alive. Harrison still on top on 12. Robertson on 10. Davidson on 10. Neil Duff on 8. And it's Neil Duff who's up next against Andreas Harrison. Neil, you require 20. Game shot on the fifth leg. Neil Duff. Big fine that for Neil Duff. Just stops the rot. He was 2 0 up. He got it brought back. Neil, you require 81. This for the match. Game Fine way there match. for Neil Duff to Neil get the Duff. job done. It was a game that played in blocks of two. Neil Duff took the 2 0 lead before it came back to 2 2. And Duff getting over the line. An incredible 11 data there to get the job done. Pick up the 4 2 success over Andreas Harrison, whose confirmation to Champions Week Saturday night is not yet confirmed we still have plenty more to play and neil duff has put himself in the mix reese robinson though will be hoping to get to 12 points when he takes on kieran tian next and you require 160. another leaves tops 120. wow what reese, a steal that 16. would have been and that's one of those moments that's just a little bit unsettling, isn't it, when you're stood at the back? Swallow hard. <laughs> yeah, look Reece at that Robinson. reaction. Robinson. Oh, yes. To put the squeeze on the group. Just tries to open up the target. Game Gets the job the done. Match. And Reece look Robinson. what that means to Reese Robinson. He'll believe that that is pretty much job done. And, well, with one lap of fixtures to go and a cushion of two points from the chasing pack. Certainly the leg difference now heavily in the favour of Reese Robinson, who temporarily will hit the top spot with one round of fixtures for everyone to go. Andreas Harrison will kick that off when he takes on Bradley Rose. Half of our field complete. Bo Greaves, we know he's in. Reese Robinson, we know he's in. Andreas Harrison is 58 points away from confirming his place on Saturday Andreas night where he would be playing 58. for £25,000. And it's tops to do just Game that. Shot. And, and oh, it's Andreas just not Harrison. any old tops. It's absolutely bang in the middle. Congratulations to Andreas Harrison, who's been put through the ringer this week. Now, when he's having a, a bit of the shake of the head, but he's currently on 14 points, dropping just three matches and a little bit of a celebration. But congratulations to him. He got over the line in the end, despite a fair few missed darts at doubles, four from 15. So we enter our penultimate match of the session. Andy Davidson takes on Reese Robinson, a win for Reese Robinson, and he go back to the top of the table. Andy nice. requires Chris, you have 274, you've hit trouble 20 to leave 214. Oh, I'll answer that question in a minute, Tommy, as Andy Davidson does do the business, winning 4 2 against Reese Robinson. Averages of 86.1 for Andy, 83.75 for Reese, but Reese just didn't look like he had the, the venom in that one. Well, one more game to bring you. Kieran Tian up against Neil Duff. You see Kieran, you're Tian start 95. on the same target, starting on the ball. Goes the more aggressive route, the treble 19 for the double. And finds. Okay, shot on a second leg, Kieran Tian.
Chat, May we what require happened to Duff? Duff? What do you mean? Well, what might be about to happen to him is he might be about to lose this game because this is a match opportunity now for Tian. Double eight. And Kieran Tian has got the job done. And that wraps up our day and it wraps up Group C. And Kieran Tian ends with a victory. Yeah, very, very strong performance. Strong performance from Kieran T and there, 97 the average to end his day. It wasn't enough to see him move in regards to the table. Neil Duff still holds on to that fourth position. But in regards to the table, we know the men that went through. It all came down to the bookies' favourites in the end. It was Andreas Harrison and Reese Robinson who go through and join Bo Greaves on Saturday night. Yeah, surprising, really, Chris Mason, that it didn't go right down to the death in the end based on where things were placed at the end of yesterday. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a strange old session of darts. It was a, a little bit like the session we had in Group B last night where everybody was just a, a bit edgy because they understood the, the complexities of, the, of the, the table as it was then. But um, it was the two that, if we were sort of gun to head, we would have picked. It was the two players that we thought were the most impressive over the course of two days, and, and they've got it done and joined Bo Greaves in the final. Yeah, did it in style as well, the pair of them. When you look at the results, at the moments that they needed to win to get through, um, they both won 4-0, didn't they, Andreas and Reese? Really, really convincing. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was nice to see as well. You know, the, the, the final game for Reese, you know, he is the type of player that needs some kind of jeopardy to get the best out of him. He's a, he likes that knockout dart situation. Neil Duff's the same. I think he's said as much to you in interviews. He he does find the Ryan Robin element quite difficult to remain focused. But yeah, it was a you know it started off with four holds of throw, and you were thinking right, well this could be fairly simple. And then right through the middle of the games, and you could see where that's the sort of area you'd expect to see the best performances from the players, and no one could hold throw. And and I, and I think ultimately that was the certainly the undoing of, of Neil Duff and, and Andy Davidson. But on a, uh, just quickly on Andy Davidson, what a, what a find he has been. I, I can't wait to see him maybe have a month or two months just to work on what he's learnt so far in, in this campaign. I can't wait to see him come back. Yeah, real experience for him, learning curve for him and the likes of Bradley Roos and Kieran Tian, still, still young men, aren't they? Yeah, in darting terms, you know, they're, they're, they are still young men. I think we can sometimes get carried away what we've seen Michael Van Gruen do in the past as a 17-year-old and now, of course, Luke Littler, but they're anomalies. They don't, that don't come around very often. I think you're going to have to go all the way back to Bristow at 17 to find anything kind of similar. And Yeah, it's, it, it, uh, the, the, quick, the, the best thing about this now is it is a fast track. Players are getting the opportunities to play under the lights. You've got the Euro Tours for the, or the Euro Tour qualifiers, the Home Nation qualifiers for a lot of players around Europe and they're getting better quicker. Just talk about the two players that are through. Um, Reese Robinson, just to highlight the point you've just made, sat there and said, this is all I've wanted to get to a Champions Night, to win a Champions Week. This is something that players are really now earmarking as a, a standard for success. Yeah, absolutely. Like the, the, when you look at the, uh, the Challenge Tour, although it has a ranking and you know, someone wins over the course of the season... There's no real trophy element to it. And ultimately this, this is the, the step down from, from the Pro Tour. So in terms of, of winning something big, there, there is nothing bigger for the amateur player. And, and, and the prize money this carries, well, I've said it and I say it many times, it's, it may, the, the actual 25 grand isn't life changing, but it's career changing and life changing in terms of the money that you can earn on the back of it. Um, gives you a bit of insurance and gives you the money to go on tour next year, go to Q school with no pressure. If you've got a young family, there's nothing worse. Your, your missus saying to you, well, hang on a minute, can we afford for you to have a week off work and go to Q school? It's a good mm. couple of thousand pounds investment. Um, and, and that can change things. A three-year-old with a birthday tomorrow, what a moment that would be for Reese. <laughs> Just picking up on that point, because we haven't really discussed it before. Uh, we talk about the practice you can get, the, the competitive practice you can get here. But Luke Littler, for example, wins here four times, two of them being Champions Weeks, and then goes on, makes a world final, wins the Premier League. How 
much does this contribute to getting players ready for big stage stuff later on? Well, we've only got to look at the impact it makes for those that play here and then go on to play in Q School. They've, they've got a leg up. They're, they've got a massive advantage. And I think when you get... This was the first real experience. You know, I know he's played in a UK Open, but this was the first real experience of under the lights and, and really having an examination. And it, it puts a completely different spin on things and makes you feel different. And, and he got up there and handled it brilliant. Even when he didn't go up there, there was a few matches he went up there and averaged a couple of mid-80s, a few disappointing performances. And we were like, ooh, is there a chink in the armour? And then he come back and averaged 100. And, and I, think he learnt, I think he learnt so much more about himself during those campaigns he played here. And, well, the proof's in the pudding, isn't it? Yeah, we spoke about Reese. Quick word on Andreas Harrison as well, because... Earlier in the week, he could have been forgiven for starting to think, this is not going to be my week, playing so well, losing so many matches 4-3. What does it say about him that he's made it through? Shows some character, doesn't it? And you could see the relief at the end when he actually, in the match that confirmed his place in the finals. And listen, the, 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 the Super Series in all of these European countries that are represented by these players, that they're more than aware. They know about this. They watch this religiously. They know what kind of impact that has. And and potentially career changing. And they all want to get their hands on the trophy. And like you say, when you add Reese up here, look at the names on there. Mm. You know, there's some, there's some great names and some great players on there. And who's going to add their, what will be the eighth name on the list? Mm. Yeah, we are going to show you the table and then just fill you in on what is happening tomorrow night. There's those two players through, Harrison and Robinson. Robinson, in the end, doing it on leg difference, those two 4-0 wins in the middle of the day, really making that difference. Andy Davidson may say great week. Uh, Kieran Tien and Bradley Roos, they were kind of out of it for a long time. Neil Duff, um, as you mentioned before, struggles sometimes during the format, so he will see it as a, a missed opportunity, this, won't he? Yeah, and and it's down to his numbers in the qualifying campaign where he's coming in, come in to a Group C. You know, ideally for him, it'd have been one of the top six in terms of qualifying. So he could, he, he really benefits from playing in Group A, he, and he's not affected. He, he doesn't get affected by the performances. He's not emotionally affected, affected if he averages eighty-five or ninety-five. What he needs to come in on a Monday for is to is to prep, and if he doesn't get it right across the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. My goodness, he gets it right on a Thursday and Friday. He didn't have that uh, benefit this week. Did he find what Rhys Robinson kind of said to be true, that Group C on Champions Week is the hardest group in an he, entire series? Absolutely. Mathematically, you're walking into three players who've already had three days prep. They're well, they're well up to speed. Group B, 60% chance of qualifying. Three from five. It's played at night. Everything points to the... It's more often than not the better players in Group B... But, of course, it's easier to qualify. Group C, Champions Week, no thanks. Right, finals night is tomorrow. Here is the breakdown for the week. So, Bo Greaves won Group A. We've just seen Andreas Harrison and Rhys Robinson go through from Group C. And it looks like it would be Cam Crabtree, Darius Sabanaskas and Conor Heenahan. Unless Bradley Brooks or Jimmy Vansky can have an almost perfect or indeed perfect night, do you see anything changing? No, but after the day... Bradley Brooks had on Monday, you were thinking, ooh, he's down in the dumps, and maybe that's just the way he is. He, he, you know, he plays with his heart on his sleeve, doesn't he? And the problem is around experienced players, they'll expose that, and I think that's what happened to him yesterday. He sort of, he got bogged down and they began to punish him, and he, he just couldn't shake it off. But I'm with you, I think the top three as it stands at the moment, I think they're going to be the three that will join Bo and Reese and Andreas. I'm sure you'll share your thoughts tonight during comms, but at this moment, is there any player that's standing out for you as the one to beat on Saturday night? Uh, I think Bo looks the most reliable at the moment. She's the one that looks the most likely if the other guys have got... They've all got similar A games, haven't they? They've all got similar ceilings. Uh, it's who has the better B game for me, and I say that no matter whether it be at this level or in Premier League dart level. And for me, Bo Greaves is the most reliable. She looks the most likely to, to average 95, which will be more than enough. We look forward to finding out. Thanks for this afternoon. We'll see you tonight. We'll see you tonight as well. And of course, tomorrow night, finals night, don't forget, it gets underway 7.30pm for Champions Night and the record prize of £25,000. And 10pm tonight for Group B, when we will find out all of the players that will be in the field. Do join us then.